Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of the new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series in which we're playing as the Metal Mouths. They kind of have a unique focus screen and uh, yeah, we're in Billings, Montana. We're led by Steel Joe. Oh my god, there's a lot of read here. In the Montanan Wastes, Steel Joe portrays himself as a striking figure whose origins are as raw and turbulent as the world around him. Once the name was slave in the unforgiving Midwest, Joe's journey started from servitude to becoming the formidable leader of the Metal Mouths. Gang is a story of audacity, transformation, and unrelenting ambition. From how he likes to tell this story, Joe is nothing less than an embodiment of grit and defiance. Ruthlessly eliminating his oppressive overseer, triggering a daring uprising that ushered in a new era for himself and his fellow slaves, proclaiming united vision for self-improvement, Joe evolved into a charismatic leader who skillfully assembled a diverse collective of settlers, miners, and those seeking a different path into the soon-to-be raider group. His unwavering commitment to their well-being furthers his rise in both power, skill, and ego. Yet in spite of this newfound success, Joe's journey towards power was anything but smooth. Faced with the limitations of the human body, he sought solace in uh, technology, embarking on a journey to Billings, Montana, a city characterized by its fascination with cybernetic enhancements that are known to Joe and the Metal Mouths as the Metal. Joe's choice to embrace this Metal path marked a turning point, igniting the evolution and near transcendence of the Metal Mouths gang from petty human raiders to fearsome machinations of metal and flesh. As a fearsome leader of the Metal Mouths, Steel Joe commands respect through a combination of relentless training, strategic brutality, and his own cybernetic enhancements. With an iron grip on his followers, Joe's ambitions led him to challenge the local powers of Montana, yet his quest for supremacy came crashing down when he encountered an adversary, adversary armed with technology superior to his own. Joe's once unstoppable empire faced a reckoning, challenging his perception of invin invincibility and forcing him to reassess. With newfound anger and vengeance, he sets his sight on the MacArthur folk. He will not be defeated again. And we're led, and we have recycling the following. Finding new sources of the metal, the gang's term uh, for pre-war implants that grant them their name and their strength. It is difficult. The original stash was sizable, but ultimately a finite supply. While well, the plan, plans of the facility gave him some ideas how to make more, most of his crew is more interested in violence and looting than the intensive labor of crafting new ones from scrap. They've taken to a salvager's mentality, taking everything they can from the fallen to reuse in their new recruits. Or in the worst case, it's killing for the sake of taking some new metal for themselves. And then we have cybernetic war warriors. The drive to improve is all-consuming. No one is a proper member of the gang until they've gotten at least one piece of metal, internal or external. And who can join our, so long as they pursue strength above all and are willing to cut themselves to pieces to get to it. Hmm. But what was once flesh? Their early history is nearly lost except for one truth, before finding the metal the gang was battered and worn down. Man from slave, but we've got to talk about the Magic City. Searching out the Magic City billings, we found a treasure uh, beyond our wildest fasc fantasies. Deep inside a specialized medical facility, newly built before the bombs fell, we found the metal. But, so you want to know how Steel Joe what came to lead, huh? Sure, I pull up a chair, adjust your arm servo motor, and I'll tell you about how the metal mouths came to be. You e see, about a decade ago, back before our story began, the man who would still become who would become Steel Joe was nothing more than one of the pack slaves out in the Midwest. After his boss had gone to sleep, having stopped and drugged himself silly, Joe decided to take a stand with the other slaves and brutally killed their boss. Knowing they couldn't remain nearby, they packed up and headed north. They packed up, uh, picked up bored souls who wanted more excitement in their lives from Harv. Or Havre, um, or Harbor, or Havre. Miners from the consortium who wanted fresh air and a fresh chance of life. Outcasts from across the northwest joined their march. In a span of a few months, Joe had assembled a collective of raiders, settlers, and everything in between. Not wanting to be like his former boss, Joe did everything to keep himself and his gangs both physically and mentally fit. However, it was never enough for him. His arms sprained. <coughs> his legs broke. His eyes strained. Even his jaw became near useless to him after months of constant strain taking its toll on his body. The same thing happened with his men. Only a few raids. The men and women of the group became just as battered and worn as Joe, only staying with him because of his charismatic charm, ruthless leadership, and his commitment to pers persistence. <coughs> but even old Joe knew that he had pushed himself and his group too far. Despite their mental and physical training, all he had succeeded in doing was wearing out those who had recruited, far worse than they had ever been treated before. It was only with the realization that it wasn't his methods, it was the limitations of the human body itself, that Joe came to find out a solution. And so he decided to venture to a place he had read about that was located close by, the magic city of Billings, Montana. A place of hope, a path of glory, a true city of magic. I don't get more stability like that. So we get that political power. We are Joe's hand picked. Meat Mouth's crew. Acolytes of Iron Tooth and Broadview Breakaways. Oh, Osmond. Experience diplomat. Implant professional. Ooh, that sounds like one we have to get legs all the way down. Interesting. From Heidi, ooh, Tiny Tim, or Tinny Tim, yes, Tinny Tim, Paula Deum, Metal Meals for Metal Mouths, interesting, unquestionable, questionable upgrade. 
Who do you have for academic advisors? Anything unique? Get gun runner name opinion. Melee run number name. Caravan trader. Logistical thingy. Raiders. Mind for death. It's not bad. Armor shattering star. Asymmetrical warfare, huh? Land doctrine research speed. Huh. Well. I kind of like the glory. And I'm a sucker for political power, so we gotta go with Heidi Garun. Heidi's got Chrome the extra day since she's got the old chop and swap in the dock, a perfect addition to the arm she got last week. Plus, they're strong enough to crush a ghoul skull. Form and function in one pretty package. Nothing likes legs. I love legs for days. Oh, we can tribute to as much people too. Um, yeah, go ahead and expand armor training. Also, we have Old World Blues, Old World Blues Radio, Old World Blues Tech Expansion, Tech, Old World Blues Generic Decisions Revamped. Um, Old World Blues. That's pretty much it, I think. No, we can. At least tax the stormmongers. Maybe. The Wasteland rewards strength. Empowered, the gang struck forth to conquer everything in reach. Earning a few new names from the strange implants they used to replace wounded flesh and strengthen their bodies, the Mother Mouths were born, but like a rabbit from a hat. The city of Billings, like its name implied, truly was a magical sight. Uh, before the Great War, although it was nowhere close to the accomplishments of the Commonwealth Institute of Technology or Big Mountain, Billings was reputed for developing its healthcare sectors much beyond the capability of America before the war. Although the developments were criticized as costly and inhumane by some, Many others praise the city for being the step into the 22nd century that America needed in the wake of many military men and women coming home with mental and physical injuries and disabilities. Joe first explored the city with a small group, the least afflicted by the months of rigorous training they undergone. Coming upon the city, they were met with fatigue glitz and glamour of a city that praised itself on automation, and specifically on the idea of human cybernetics. Boasters promoting the benefits and uses of human augmentation in scattered walls, with a pre-war broadcast of a woman and a man proclaiming how great their lives had been since replacing their limbs on loop. All the posters and broadcasts pointed towards one facility, the Billings Health Center. Upon entering the building, Joe and his squad experienced the most magnificent sight. Test equipment, prototypes, actual functioning autoducts, even a relatively sane Mr. Orderly, who was more than happy to have a visitor to the city in decades. Although the Orderly was concerned at the state of the group, they saw it as nothing more than a prime opportunity for the city government to showcase their newest developments, and so... Joe and the rest became cybernetically enhanced with some of the most top-of-the-line pre-war cybernetics the world of 2077 had to offer. The Mr. Orderly, citing some pre-war tax code or act or something, even proclaimed that if they could bring their friends, they would get a free discount on manufacturing the metal themselves due to the pre-war manufacturers no longer answering the Orderly's delivery requests. And with a single word, metal, and one of the most prolific enhancements, the one to his jaw, Joe knew that what he must become, what his entire gang must become, and so the metal mouths were born, born of science, fury, pre-war sins. Ooh, do we have any implants? We have some infantry equipment. We have a few implants already. How are our civvies? Looking all right. Born of fury. Do we need more? Yeah. You know what? We're going to be born of science. This one. No, thrown back by MacArthur. Rising to the top of the, both brawn and brain, still Joe's next great plan was to raid the town of Missoula, having heard of the great wealth and food there. However, the city was already under protection of the armored warriors of the MacArthur base. The colonel had been an unexpected foe, but metal made strong. After several days of countless conversions, the newly proclaimed metal mouths began the reign of savagery across the region. Beginning with the quaint town of Broadview, the citizens were given a simple request, submit or die. Upon seeing the unusual and almost inhuman beings that were making such a threat, the town capitulated to their demands, however. Not all towns are so lucky. The town of Park City, for instance, was completely wiped out by the Metal Mouths when their inhabitants refused to submit. The complete and utter annihilation of Park City served to Joe as an opportunity to terrify the region into submission. Using pieces of scrap and useless metal that served no purpose, the corpses of those from Park City were repurposed into horrific effigies and totems that signified the approach of the Metal Mouths, as well as what would happen to those who did not submit to their will. Was only worked in isolated settlements as opposed to more organized groups. This enabled the metal mouth to grow bigger and more vicious than ever. With the use of the metal, Joe and the rest of the mouths no longer needed to maintain peak physical condition through strenuous exercise. They could simply take part apart the robotic replacements, feed a leg, arm, organ, or have an auto dock for the Mr. Orderly to look at it. If it was going bad, a bit of metal could be used to fix it. If it was growing weak, a simple diagnostic could return it to peak condition. Joe thought the metal mouths would run the Montana wastes. He even grew an idea that he could grow to rule the whole of the new, world, new old world, Northern Commonwealth, considering the task as his final act that he wished to accomplish before he passed on, if it could even pass on at all anymore. Immortality, power, strength, all these corrupted Joe's mind as it did the rest of the game, enhanced by their cybernetics. Their seemingly infinite supply of metal and the ruthless and vicious tactics, the metal mouths began to plan a raid. A raid that was sure to submit the beginning of their legacy forever. Raid of the guns. Trust the metal plates. 
Metal armor. Give the best crews together. Or get them back together. Give special forces implants. Special forces gear tier one. Well, I mean, we're already researching that. Metal. What is metal armor? Um, the roller skates. I'm not sure what metal armor is. Is that crowd control gear? Oh, oh metal armor is crowd control gear. Okay. Well, I technology gives special forces implants. Oh, don't technically don't really have that one unlocked. Yeah, Royal Implants for Spec Ops. Has not researched. Give special forces. Trust to metal plate. We can buy more infantry equipment, can't we? And eh, we can eventually. Get free technology. We must become absolutely metal. Because right now we're going down asymmetric warfare, so we're going to become enforcers. Thrown back by MacArthur, the Bazaar. If you wonder about the Bazaar, please go right ahead. Better use of a solar panel than scrap for one part. Um, military is not bad. Uh, assertions. Also, just to let you know, our technology is really god awful. We are basically of nothing. We're basically on everything except for robotics, as well as power armor. I want more science points, maybe broken tribute. That's fine, whatever. So everything else is really bad. Really, really, really ungodly badly. It's awful. You could begin scavenging program, I guess. So then we can choose Embrace of Iron, and Plant Technology, Tribal Tech Tree, and Ready to Kill with 1% more population, as well as free anti tank. Or you can go over here and get the tool procurement, more blueprints, and work schedule for more construction speed and factory repair speed. And eventually you get the other either intermediate industry tech and intermediate electronics, which is good, or Fist of Lead. You can simplify designs and powered melee weaponry. In all honesty, I like mine over metal. But I want embraces of iron so you can get war pigs. Because I want the extra population. But this make more sense. Now, let's read about system error as I look down here. Exploit the eggheads. Well, we need more civvies to do that. We can build ourselves up, because eventually you can do Rise of Mind. We need a lot of science points. And we're making science points, but it's going to take a long, long, long time for that. The Metal Mouths had in their minds to achieve the pinnacle of human condition, the strongest bodies, the most intelligent minds. All they needed was a means to sustain themselves. Despite the cybernetic replacements, their settlements needed food, and those who not yet replaced their internal organs with cybernetic enhancements also found themselves with a highly increased metabolism, preventing them from gaining weight, but also on the cusp of exhaustion, and then eat massive quantities of food at almost every waking moment. And so, on rumors of a treasure trove of calves, food, and potential new recruits in the town of Missoula, the Metal Mouths journeyed west, slaughtering the stormmongers and the West Mountain natives they encountered along the way. However, upon reaching the town, while they were met with a glorious set of ranches, wealth, and power, they were also met with an unfortunate sight. Due to the recent threats of conquest by the new nearby Heaven's Gate, Colonel Santiago, of the recently established MacArthur Enclave Detachment, had sent out approximately a full three dozen Enclave soldiers, all armored in uh, advanced power armor, Mark II, to protect the town. Upon learning these newfound insolence, who seemed to also have access to a form of precious metal, Joe grew ever greedier and began the charge by leading a cybernetic punch towards the first soldier he saw, only to find his cyber fist being coated in green substance. A green substance that ate away at his metal. Red, green, and blue beams of light now also emitting from the soldiers protecting the town came quickly after, eating away both literally and metaphorically at Joe's metal mouths. Joe was lucky to only have his fist taken away. Much of the metal mouths found themselves without legs, arms, heads, and worse. A first and final blow came when a woman whom Joe's cybernetics picked up on the being called Colonel, ordered a full pulse grenade barrage. Pain surged throughout Joe and every one of the middle mouths, with Joe using the last of his strength to order a full retreat. Upon a near human feat of reaching Billings, Joe and the surviving metal mouths found themselves without friends, without an infinite supply of metal, and worst of all, an enemy who had a supply of metal, or something stronger. From that day on, Joe swore to get his revenge on the town, and on the woman who had humiliated him. Nothing would stand in his way. Perhaps patience is valuable after all. Barrier dead, and for now we carry on. More political power, weekly stability, and war support. Interesting. Patience is a virtue. Or is valuable. We'll have vengeance before those guys know it. Um, let's do this one. I like more stability and political power. Oh, I don't know. Do you want mine over metal? You get more research speed. This one's okay. And we get powered melee weaponry eventually. Anyway. I just want that extra population. Knock some sense into them. You can go to the Southern Go-Getters versus 
Why not Wyoming? Hmm. Block party, more stability, pipe guns, we could use that. Remove four, production and billings, motor mongers. Maybe Stormy Dan is right. Uh, that's for fighters, for planes. Late shipment. Better than coal. The cult struck back. We get go to war with the cult of liberty. Join the miscounts. Who are the miscounts? Oh, they're all the way up there. Hmm. Montana, so there's assertions. We have to prove ourselves to survive in the wasteland. Let's go do that first. We can grab some, uh, whatever we want. Or insignia with a frail body. Kalium developed an unrelenting hatred for the other members of the Hav that ridiculed them for struggling to do the same hard labor others easily could. So Joe recognized recognizing Kalium, a mind capable of devising the most torturous methods for dispatching the entire townships, and gave the means to carry them out. This one's alright. Chrome Feaster? Or we go this one for more cybernetic implants. Old Iron Tooth is strange. When he walked over into our borders one day, aged, grizzled, and cloaked and mysterious, petitioning Steel Joe for an offer. Said he wanted to study how we modified ourselves and how our bodies reacted to the implants and augments. In return for this, he gave us some of his own knowledge to help us out, although any, the, the, only the boss knows the full details. Guess he had something he liked, because Joe gave Iron Tooth the lab to work, do his work. Part of an old Billings Hospital, a shrouded place no one can enter without a say so. All sorts of rumors and theories have cropped up about him and the source of his medical knowledge, although facts are hard to come by. The only true clues any anyone's got is uh, Louis uh, swears he saw a wooden charm around the old man's neck carved like some sort of wolf, wolf's head. Hmm. Production cost goes down, more army reliability, more research speed. Land production speed goes up, which is fine. Offensive war stability. And better production cost. You know what? I still think we might go with killer here. I like that army XP and better stability, war stability modifier. And that's pretty invaluable. Um, bunch for agriculture. We go through this. More research speed, infantry equipment. This is all good stuff, don't get me wrong. Montana military. Non core map levels goes up by 5%. Vehicle technology. Yeah, seems alright. Montana industry. More political power is good. Scraping old chunks of honk. Montana industry. The many old abandoned sites around Montana. Let's start looking and see what we can't find. We have four research flocks, which is still not bad. Building a town. Arms workshop. Tool procurement arms. Good research slot, which is actually really good, too. Scrapping old hunks of junk. Tons of uh, old scraps all over the place. Either from the old National Guard checkpoints or other stuff. Let's use them for our own means. Uh, Montana Black Party. It's been a couple years since we set up in buildings, and the boards around us are getting pretty sad. Why don't we go check on the neighbors? Slap genetic enhancements. Good. Because we can go to war with these guys, called a Liberty. We just have to be very careful about the coal consortium because uh, Montana chapter is going to come kill us. Swords of Harmony, or Swords of Haman. Boros. Get rid of our focus stream. Embrace the tribal wave life. Adopt raiding to survive. Or settle our people down. That's good. I do want this one. But we must wait. We have tribal stuff too. And a golden geckos. More political power, more stability, all the good stuff. Um, implants, we could. Should probably give it to our infantry, probably, right? Hello, ma'am. General ma'am got a little rowdy this week trying to press his paw and let a small raid up into one of the towns allied with the Cult of Liberty. Normally, you need Steel Joe's approval for that, but if the loot's good enough, maybe you can get praise for showing initiative. Besides, what are they going to do about it? Hey, you never know. And the cult struck back. Well, we didn't see this one coming. 
Harbour used to be run by regular townsfolk, the kind that won't look for trouble after the Cajun assault. Now they believe in this liberty. The Bobs have gotten a lot bolder. Just yesterday, they sent a war party to pay us back for Mayhem's raid, killing dozens of the Metal Mouths and burning down one of our camps. Ooh. And then Steel versus Faith. Alright, time to show Montana that Missoula was a fluke. We started this fight with the Code of Liberty, and now we're going to finish it by marching away to Havre and showing them that this metal makes us stronger than their nutcase preaching. A little mayhem. Let's see what we can do here. We've got a couple uh, divisions here. Militia, not good. Definitely not ideal. Warrior training, let's go General Mayhem. And what else we got here? Industry stuff, of course. Uh, let's wait to do that one. Let's do this one next. We have no men to spare. It's pretty normal. So here are divisions. Fallen Scrappers. We've got... Oh, Father Stubborn, so that's fine. I'm going to give us more science points. This is actually not bad. And then we have Riders and then Spec Ops. Boop. 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 Military High Command. Metalhead. Not bad. Implant Spring Blades. Alright. Born for Mayhem. Not bad. I like the initiative. Demo equipment, less reliability, but way better production cost. Meat besides metal. And more HP too. Who do you have for chief of army? Meaner than a junkyard dog. Division experience gain. Right. Well, this guy's really good. Shiny hydraulic arms. Way better just for those times. I'm gonna go with meaner than a junkyard dog, actually. To me, that just sounds better. Um, docks? I think docks would probably be the best one for this. Demo, fire team, infantry, infantry, or melee equipment, the smiths. Breakthrough reliability. Former stormmonger. Bronze show off. Raider of the seas. Fighting wires, raider attacker, supply consumption. Uh, get more money. Let's find another cultural, cultural advisor. Experience soldiers' losses goes down, which is good. More stability is all right. Just so we'll go sims on us. War support decryption. Enemy operator detection chance factor. And extraction rate. I like the decryption. I like chop jaw, though. Some folks are born to fight, and some are born to also fix stuff in their spare time. While he goes on an occasional raid to help out and gather material, Chao Jaws' real love is repairing anything and everything that breaks down. Weapons, tools, electronics, you name it. Of course, he's got a tendency to put his own modifications on anything he works on, and has a bizarre aesthetic sense of it all his own. Also, he talks to himself while he works, which is more than a few folks find annoying. Production cost goes up, but makes us slightly stronger. Ooh. We're going to need some of this. Cold Strike's back. We'll do that one, and then keep working on military factories. And there's another civvy, he's good. Old guns, new people. Some of the old guns stashed at the checkpoints can be fixed up. Am I willing to lose this and this? It's going to be kept ratio for the technology. Uh, we'll probably use this one first, so knock some sense into them. Yeah, it's fun to spend all day testing the metal, but maybe our gangs need to spend some time actually, you know, getting stuff done. Keeping them in line. Some of the crew's been taking issues with the new work rotations. Saying we should just delegate all the slaves. Show them yours that aren't suggestions. Put their backs into it. Work harder and smarter, but mostly harder. So if we go to war with them, can we actually do anything? They do have power armor. Uh, a few things have power armor. I don't think we can do very well here. Could be wrong. Infantry. Become inspirational, I guess. And you. Ooh, melee actor. Cunning leader? That's different. Be cunning leader. Well, let's save. I don't think this is going to go really great for us. Especially with that, or the lack of an uh, anti tank. But since we're here. Infantry. Yeah, and there. Is there a river here? I think there is a river. I don't think it would be smart to go to war with these guys. They immediately start attacking us. Asymmetric warfare is done. Yeah, no, they're just. They're gonna blow straight through us. 
Even over here on the right side here. Oh, they're forcing the attack, though. Yeah, we would need some infantry over here. We're losing here, too, which is not ideal. I think it'd be best to give us a little more time to go to war with them as we develop our industry a little bit more. Watering holes. Between the harsh winters and the derelict countryside, you think we'd have a lot more water to go around. Scraping out old, old, home. Blah, blah, blah. Scraping old hunks of junk. Tons of old scraps all over the place, either from the old National Guard checkpoints or other stuff. Let's use them for our own means. Building a town. Town's the uh, most homely thing one can make, and how to? If we want to do anything, we got to know the right tool to pull it off. And then mine over metal, I guess. Reading the manuals on some of this equipment it was really done wonders for working it. Maybe we should have tried this sooner. Ooh, that's be good to do. Oh, which one do we want? Better plane production and speed. I'll get all this up. Motor mongers, that's alright. We're going to go with maybe Stormy Dan's right. It's always going on and on about how great flying is. Backs them, backs them up sometimes, even if we can't get much in the area. Maybe we're worth holding on to these airframes for later. Or I could strap a plane engine on a bike and see what happens. Plants may not be people, but they sure are important. Uh, growing plants equals food, do math. Caps make company, money talks. A late shipment. The coal consortium is usually pretty timely with their payments. Heck, they even know how to, when the caps are late. We've been doing our part lately to keep their caravans safe and they're always for it. I guess we'll have to go check in on them. Better than coal. While well, a bunch of shiny rocks seem like a ridiculous payment, old Iron Tooth tells us this is actually pretty useful. They can help with a near a near a metal connection in their implants. Let's see how many more consortium has been digging up. Diamonds in the bag or else. Doc Ripper agrees with Iron Tooth. The diamonds would be a great raw material for making the control circuits a new metal mouth or improving the old. So the consortium has a choice. They can fork over every diamond rock they've been picking up as a side gig, or they can watch us come and take them. Montana military. Uh, I'll gun behind it. Every blade of grass, they say. Well, we need to have some in our hands, first of all. Well, everyone, we're not doing great. It's it's kind of a mixed bag right now, but we're going to be talking through a lot more focuses. Pushing buttons wildly. We found an intact generator. One of the guys pushed a button on, a couple buttons on it, and thankfully turned on instead of blowing up or something. I got lucky. Uh, retrofitting the lines. Look at that, working production lines after all these years. Montana's crouching. That's plenty of junk all around we can use that isn't just hunks of metal and stuff. And the future Montana. All of our developments has led up to this. Will our future be brighter or will it be dim and fading? Craving Montana. Our territory hasn't been expanded in a while and the crew's getting restless. Time comes to, to prove our leadership in a battle. Well, let's see. Um, yeah, I've tried to raid uh, the Ruminators and Northern Cons. It has not gone well. The Stormmongers are dead. Well, as we saw earlier, we tried to fight the Cold of Liberty. That didn't go well either. Montana Brotherhood's over here. So we're kind of honestly kind of screwed a little bit right now. We're not doing well and a lot of our stuff, and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend more time with this. Um, let's see. So after that one, I guess a strange howling. Oh, we need the lands. Oh, we need the lands. Um, but the coal consortium did die, so we didn't get to that event, unfortunately. A favorable count. So neighbor middle mark has no unused war goals in other countries. Ask to join the miscounts. Well, we might not be able to get down here. That kinda sucks. Um, regardless, I guess medical breakthrough. Meds that won't kill us, so we gotta figure out how to make more of this. Irrigation. Don't you want to survive? We need water. Manifest leftovers. Manifest sure to leave a lot of weird stuff that's been scattered county to county. I sure do love guns. Don't you have a gun that won't blow up? How to kill or nicely make F off. It's the most important lesson I know. Knowing the land. Knowing the land will give us one heck of an advantage against other folks and bringing chaos or bringing chems into the fold. Drugs are bad, but we call these chems, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, knowing what's shooting. What's the point in having a gun if you can't shoot correctly? Command equally. The ability to listen to each other, to pick and respect a leader, these are critical things to the society. The people of Montana. The people of Montana hear our call between the cons of MacArthur and the Brotherhood, we must stand united. Production factories. The old Rust Belt remnants here can go far over their tending. Equal supply and good hearts. Uh, plenty of old supplies around in the store even today. Scavenge away. Also, we're just flying on the northern cons now, too. The Ruminers are taking a long time to take out the Jacksons. It's kind of uh, a little different, to say the least. Um, let's take a look, see. What else we got around here? Driving old APCs, test driving is a surefire way to learn how to do this, hopefully. Uh, the roads in the stretch, plenty of roads need repair. The old brickworks, old factories make for great new factories too. What are you reading this for exactly? Zack Company. Well, for this one I'm reading for a video. The revenues of Zack Company uh, spread their, uh, spread across Montana, finally. With them, their teachings as well. Well, that's not too bad. Special Forces training time gets better. Better capacity multiplier and making a mountain out of a molehill. <clears throat> uh, we've retrofitted some of these vehicles into stuff we can use, and boy howdy, are we having a blast with it. So we're going to read and do all those focuses off screen, probably. Um, in the meantime, though, we're going to save and see if we can get the core territories from the Coal Consortium uh, first. I kind of doubt that we would be able to, 
but you never know. So let's get up here first. And do that. And then demand a rifle territories. We're going to intimidate them. We're here to intimidate. Uh, excuse me, guys. Can you please move your butts? You don't need these. Even though we do want to go to war. I do want the Coco Sessions territory, which might put us at a war with these guys. Which is actually probably not a good thing. You know? Um, so, we'll see. And they reject us. Not good. Not good whatsoever. Because we definitely can't take these guys on. Um, well, if that's the case, I might, sit, might just end it here. I might spend more time doing the focuses and whatnot, and we might go to War of the Cons and set ourselves up until we get killed by MacArthur, Cold Liberty, Montana Brotherhood. We got a lot of bad options here. A lot of things that could go wrong. But hey, this is the first episode, and we're having a good time with a uh, good old Steel Joe. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what we can do with the metal mouths. Thanks for watching, and have a great metal mouth.